Sabi niya, yung pala, ano siya? The resolution of the South China Sea relies on the marine scientists, on the oceanologists, relies on the scientists who will not deal with sovereignty and territorial issues but will only deal about one ecology. You know, after I presented my paper, the general of the PLA went around the table, took my hand and said, Wow, Dr. Carlos, I like your paper. Okay, another point. A point, the Chinese, if you just keep on badgering, sabi nila, they're patient, di ba, 5,000 years of history. We should equally be patient. We'll just have to keep on badgering them until bumigay sila. After all, China, if it is not yet the, a superpower, would like to be, is threatening to be the next superpower. Let us demand from China to be a compliant international law player. The next question is asked by Reza Tolentino. Was it wise for Duterte the SCS territorial dispute and proceed with a bilateral relation with China? Yeah, exactly the same answer. You know, pag nag-aaway kayo, yung hindi nyo pinapag-awayan, yun muna pakialaman nyo. Magtinda ka muna ng pineapple, ano, verde coconut oil, yung mga gusto nyo ng Chinese saging, di ba? Uh, Yung pinapag-awayan nyo, hindi naman niya sinabi kay Grotlet, sabi niya, huwag mo siya i-front load, i-back load mo siya. Nagin mo siya sa back partner, no? Meaning, isat aside mo siya. Ano ba yung term nun? Isang tabi ba yun? Isinang tabi. Meaning, yung pinapag- yung di ba, misti sa pamilya, huwag niyo muna, uh, huwag muna kayong mag-usap doon sa mga pinapag-awayan. Pag-usapan yung hindi pinapag-awayan. In the literature, that is, stay with the low politics area, move into the high politics area, after you have planted the goodwill, the trust, the confidence in the low politics area. Diba? Kasi friend na kayo eh. When you move into the more sensitive area, itinanin mo na yung friendship. Diba? So, kasi mag-spill over siya, mag-ramify siya into the high politics, mas maganda yung usapan kasi yung bigla kang nandun sa kontra-kontra kayo. Magbabarilan lang kayo niya. Diba? Yeah. So, to be fair to the character, I think the, the word he used is, uh, I don't even know the word that he used, but it, it should be really isinantabi, meaning put it in the margins really the case u.s being entangled in the middle east and china and china becoming a strong economic power and soon military power yes. actions as horrible as advised is it really the case um i don't think so if you will notice duterte was uh, mayor i think for more than 20 years and he has even related many many terrible experiences with the americans and so, you as a scholar, you know that you are going to, you, to really, your attitude and orientation will depend on your personal experience. That's why even then he said, tapusin mo na yung balikatan, yung mga cover code, etc. Stop training with the Americans, di ba? But he cannot do that because there is the Mutual Defense Treaty, there is the Visiting Forces Agreement, there is the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, which Duterte, even as Chief Executive, cannot in fact abrogate. It has to be an act of Congress. So, um, but over time, what is good about Duterte is he's willing to change his mind. I like that part. And you as a scholar, by the way, that should be your first quality. You should be willing to change your mind. If you're not willing to change your mind, then you should have the humility of the scholar to change your mind, presented with harder evidence. Because if you don't, that's why your sentences should not stop with a period. It should stop with a question mark. Did you see the ellipses in tell me? That, that, that. Meaning you're, you're trying to decide. Diba? Because if you put a period in your sentence, that means we can no longer contest you. If you want to do that, and you want to be an ideologue, and you want to be a bigot, wag na lang kayo sa university. Mag, uh, I don't know, magpare na lang kayo magmadre. That's not for the period. No? You cannot contest that. But because you are a scholar, you have to change your mind when confronted with better evidence. Otherwise, you're a bigot. I don't know. I have worse words for you. And you're not a scholar, certainly. And technological innovations, how can we assure that human capital will not diminish and be replaced with robots? How can we conserve human capital? And how can we develop Philippine politics, security, and governance? Oh, I can answer that with 10,000 books. You know, but I just address the human capital thing. Human capital is always progressing. It is always uh, advancing. 
If you don't notice, you are taller, you are handsomer, you are more beautiful, you eat better food. And yes, um, these things about you being replaced by robots and uh, by automation, that is part of the evolution of things. But later on, it will be replaced by new things which will be needed by the new way of industrialization. So you will not suddenly be, you know, part of the unemployed in magin taong graso na lang kayo. You, you will have to find out where can I place myself where I cannot be replaced by a robot, and that would be professions where the human interaction is important. Do you think nurses could be replaced by a robot? Do you want to be injected by a robot? Ayo ko. Gusto mo bang boxan yung puso mo ng robot? Ayo ko din, ba? So, maraming maraming mga bagay na, yung mga caregivers, palagay niyo ba yung matatanda na gusto nang magpatiwakan ay uh, robot ang gusto nilang kausap? Gusto nila is a warm body. Diba? By the way, one of the things that we, uh, else, you don't like to get married, if you're getting married, you're not having children. Or you're living in, you're not having children because you want to travel. Um, okay lang, but I don't know who's going to pay your pensions. You know? Think about that. By the way, that is not just true to the Philippines, which we just covered in our research. It's all over the world. The millennials really are not likely to go into uh, the married uh, state. And if at all, if they want to get married, they want a contract. You know, something like, what's again, after five years, I'm Yeah, but you live in a different world. <laughs> And the other thing which we discovered there is that um, there is now uh, uh, an aging in our country. And what can be done for the aging population in developing countries? What can be done is because uh, in developing countries, there is a smaller cadre of professionals who can in fact push economic growth. Then by all means, take advantage of the architects, of the engineers, of the scientists who while they are already considered old, meaning 60 and above uh, per UN standard, can still be a productive part of the population. To repeat, we already agreed to the Madrid Protocol on Aging, which pushes active aging. Kasi sayang yung accumulated wisdom and expertise of these professionals na hindi nyo nagagamit. Do you know that um, one of my neighbors, uh, just um, near my house, we retired together, he stopped teaching, and he became big as a, as a refrigerator, and he died within one and a half years. You die because your, your only exercise is from the refrigerator to your bed, from the bed to the refrigerator. While me, I continue to teach, I'm going to get back to the bed, I'm going to get back to the bed, I'm going to get back to the But yeah, you just have to continue to be active because in any part of your body, you do not use with atrophy. Right? I think is the reason why President Duterte still lets the Chinese stay at the West Philippine Sea. Are you in favor with his decision? He cannot do otherwise. His pragmatism tells him that, uh, guys, alam nyo, iiyak kayo pag nalaman ninyo ang capability ng ating armed forces. And the reason why they are there is that once upon a time, I'm sure you know the Bonifacio Global City that was sold by a president and we never found out where the money was. Up to this time, wala pang napipreso dahil na wala yung pera. That was supposed, pag nakita niyo yung budget ng AFP, 95% ng pang sweldo. Wala itong binibili ng pako, martilyo, etc. Anything for equipment because we were all relying on the Americans at the time. Remember that time, pag meron nag intrude sa airspace natin, ang mga Amer ang American tumutugis. So, even our airplanes, I'm sure, nakita nyo, palagi nagbabagsak. Yung C-130 natin, we have to cannibalize the 130s to let them off. So, the AFP has been uh, neglected. But having said that, I also delivered a paper in Washington, D.C. on rendering the AFP, or abolishing the AFP, and making it a leaner and a meaner AFP. I don't know why you need 140,000 armed forces of the Philippines. The fight is now in cyberspace. Hindi na yung bumbuan ng soldiers, di ba? So why do you have 90,000 Philippine Army? So even that, panahon pa ng Amerikano yung inyong kanyang configuration. And uh, so that means they have to reconfigure themselves. 
And that rate, high school graduates na nire-recruit nila. Ngayon, PhD dapat ang nire-recruit nila. Because that is where uh, the, the war is. The warfare is now in cyberspace. So you don't need, you don't need all these warm bodies, you know. Uh, but there should be a transition. So many many things which are really deficits, which I hope the next president in the next one uh, in the after 1,000 days will pay attention to. The long-term solution for such for territorial conflicts, most especially the issue between Philippines and China, and what can the neighboring countries do to help? The medium to long term is a regional fishing agreement. Because um, we can argue ourselves black and blue and red in the face and we will all be dead and we have not resolved it. That is the reason why I said it's only the marine scientists, it is only the oceanologists, it is only China changing the quality of the seven artificial islands into weaponized structures, into research stations like Antarctica, which will allow all scientists all over the world to do their research there, to study the sea plants, the ocean, etc for everyone, and not to weaponize it. Because when you weaponize it, that means you have introduced another arms race. Ayan, andyan na yung US, andyan na yung Australia, pati Germany, inimbita na rin nila, di ba, Great Britain. Anong gagawin nyo? Magpatayan na lang kayo, I mean, well, let's just, ano, lumayo-layo tayo dyan, because we have nothing to do with it. But this has now become the new arena of conflict. But, uh, yes, the best is really to have a regional fishing agreement. I have written my question there, but I have also my digital copy. Um, my question for you, Mom, is this. How will we fare in the struggle for global economic dominance among some of our closest foreign trade and investment partners? I have also some question, but it was already given to you. So that's my question. Or should I repeat it? Okay. How will we fare in the struggle for global economic dominance among some of our closest foreign trade and investment partners. Um, you will notice there was uh, a report uh, made by, I'm not sure whether it's the IMF or ADB, but it's the one watching our uh, economic uh, uh, health. And what is so spectacular about that is there are only two uh, ASEAN countries now with positive uh, investment which are positive investment destinations. They are Vietnam, and the other is the Philippines. Why? If you are an investor, sobrang dami nating minerals na kailangan mo. No, iron, chromite, uranium. Uranium, kailangan mo uranium para sa iyong nuclear power plants, di ba? No. And the economy, never mind the 60-40 in the uh, uh, constitution, is so liberalized. It's almost an open economy. So oh, this is one of the best destinations. But let us make sure the foreign direct investments are not dead or pretending investments. Doon lang pala siya sa stock market, pinalalago lang niya yung pera niya. It should create jobs, it should put up factories, it should support entrepreneurs and the like. It should be active foreign direct investment. Thank you. So we still have students. So with, uh, we have a question from our ABC president, Mr. Paul Gabonde. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. So my question is that, uh, first, as we all know that there are a lot of uh, issues, it could be social, it could be local or national issues, and also social injustice is way more present nowadays. And my question is that, um, is it possible that in the near future, our generation would experience third world war? <laughs> and if you will answer this question, though, what would be that war? Less likely, everyone wants to be rich, isn't it? Who wants to be poor here? Please give yourself already. Everyone wants to be wealthy, right? Who wants to be poor? So it's up to you guys. Do you know you can decide who the next president will be and who will constitute the Congress? Kaya alam mo kayo magtamad-tamad na mag-cast ng inyong vote. Alam niyo ba kung bakit nangyari sa Brexit yan? Kasi yung mga British young people nagtamad na magpunta sa polls. But all of them want to be uh, European. That's the reason why they want another referendum and this time they're going to participate. Guys, if you do not participate, you have no business saying anything about our government. And participating means going to the polls and voting. And you are the biggest in the 54 million uh, voters' uh, demographics. Kayo yung pinakamalaki. 
As I said, kung alam nyo lang yung power na nasa kamay ninyo, the power of the ballot, you can elect everybody from the chief executive down to the barangay if you only put your heart into it. Diba? But, pero pag nagdamad-damad kayo, wala lang kayong pinapakailaman kung mga Netflix ninyo, at saka yung mga Netflix <laughs> No, there is a time for this thing, but I want you to recognize your power, your power as the millennials. Millennials all over the world will really change things. It's not anything for me to talk about. It's really something which you can do. The social injustice that you're talking about, you can do something about it. And you guys, uh, do not uh, ambition to be followers, ambition to be leaders. I wrote a book on the ASEAN Parliament. We need an ASEAN Parliament because we are integrating regionally. No one among the, uh, each of the 10 parliaments can in fact legislate. Uh, for the whole region. Why don't you want to be a member of parliament? Huwag na kayong mag-ambit yun na magtinda ng tahod yan sa tabi, meron na magtitinda niyan, di ba? So mag-ambit yun kayo ng mataas. I want to be not only a member of the Philippine Congress, but a member of the ASEAN Parliament. And you read my book and it says, even at the age of 20, you can be one. Kasi, excuse me, it's no longer not along political party lines, it is along functional lines meaning those who are engaged in injustice, refugees, humanitarian assistance, that's how you are going to align yourselves across the region. Diba? But ayaw kayo mag-ambisyon na ganyan, ang bababa ng ambisyon nyo. And as I said, do not stay in the BA. Wala kayong makikita sa BA, you have to go to the PhD. So yung mga administrators dito, pakibigyan lang na yung scholarship ang yung mga estudyante para hanggang sa PhD ay makapag-aaral. Diba? <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. So we still have people for your presence and for your great presentation, ma'am. So I would like to call on Ms. Estrella Kapuloy for the closing remarks. Ma'am, you can go to the podium, ma'am. You can add it. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. So with that, we would like to end this wonderful uh, event. We are so blessed to have her with us right now. A very important uh, speaker for the College of Arts and Sciences, IS. You are so blessed to have her. She is so wonderful and so talented, so brilliant to go with that. We say thank you very much. Can we have a round of applause? Second, um, since she mentioned about scholarship and opportunity grant for students, the, the Fulbright, the PYLP, these are the opportunity for you to move out of the country and study and be trained. There are SUSI for the professional, for faculty, to be bringing your interest to the right person if you have the interest to apply. All right? So, mom, Dagan, maraming salamat sa inspiration and wisdom. Also, we say thank you for the organizers, the 